Hey, shalom and blessings, everybody. This message is not only for those that are feeling alone, rejected, misunderstood, uh, persecuted, or feeling like they're not being heard by others. It's also about the day of the Lord. But I want to give encouragement to those also that are not feeling like they're being heard or just feel alone right now. And I want to start off right here at Isaiah 2. This is interesting about the end days. Look what he says. For you have rejected your people, the house of Jacob, because they are full of things from the east. And of fortune tellers like them Philistines. Look at that. So it's from the east. He's saying the east right there. But it's also full of fortune tellers, divination, it's false prophecies. And that's the things that came out of those regions during that time, right? Uh, from the Philistine region. So it's very interesting. And they strike hands with the children of foreigners. So you're making deals, you're making pacts, you're you're becoming, you're having unity, peace, and love with the foreigners. But look what it says. Their land is filled with silver and gold, and there's no end of their treasures. It's And look what he says. Their land is filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. So it's their armies, powerful armies, strong armies, and militaries. And there's their land is filled with gold and silver. And I, I don't know about you, but that's what's going on today in the land of Israel, as it is with other nations. But look what he says. Their land is filled with idols. Now... This is physical idols as it is spiritual. Now, you can think physical idols with like Hinduism, Buddhism, and things like that. Uh, but you can also do spiritual where it's, you know, the spiritual aspect to why they made physical idols, which was things for like power, success, money, uh, fame, um, you know, sexual immorality, uh, drunkenness, things like that. So they would always seek these idols for even prosperity and other uh, internal desires, right? And they bow down to the work of their hands. So what they their own fingers have made. So man is humbled and each one is brought low. And he says, do not forgive them. Is he, you know, he's basically saying your name will not be written in the land's book of life, basically. So we must be humbled. He says, enter into the rock. This is where it gets interesting. And hide in the dust. From before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty, the haughty looks of man shall be brought low and the lofty pride of men shall be humbled and the, the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. It's very interesting that he says that people would hide in the clefts of the rocks, uh, they would hide in the caves. This goes back to Revelation um, as it does Hebrews. Now, what's very interesting, Hebrews talks about how the destitute, the rejected, those uh, that were being persecuted throughout society, all throughout history, and that did not, that were not heard, <coughs> excuse me, that were misunderstand, misunderstood, um, that they used to hide in the caves of the rocks. You think about, you know, when uh, Lot l l fled with his daughters and um, out of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah when the judgment was coming. And, but his wife still had that desire to look back. She still had idols in her heart, so she burnt up. She still was uh, desiring something that was there. Um, and it was unholy. It was sinful, right? So they ran into the caves, right? But we also see that uh, you have like Elijah went into the caves. You have the prophets that Obadiah hid during the days of Elijah um, into the caves. There was a lot of things, but the people that were always holy and righteous and seeking God were were in a spiritual uh, place of in the cave. They're in the spiritual place of of hiding, if you will, though you're not physically in hiding necessarily. Maybe you are in some countries. I don't know. Um, but it's a spiritual understanding as well as it is a physical that you're being rejected, that you're not being heard, that you're being misunderstood, that people don't want to listen to you. And, you know, you just feel like I'm alone, like like Elijah did, right? Uh, so I want to show you this, that even in Hebrews, it talks about in 11, where the destitute, the rejected, uh, the persecuted are always in the rocks, hiding in the caves. And, and now it's going to change, right? He said it's going to change. So what's very interesting is that these people that were rejected by society, that were misunderstood, that people didn't want to listen to, will now come out. It will not be fearful or hiding like Adam and Eve, but now the rich, the leaders, the haughty, the prideful, the idol worshipers, the sexual and moral, they'll hide. But look what he says in Revelation 6. 
Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, slave and free, look what he's saying, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling on the mountains and the rocks to fall on us and hide us from the face of the of him who is seated on the throne in the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of the wrath has come. Who can stand? Every knee shall bow, right? It's very interesting that those people are still worshiping the world, that it still took pleasure in it, that still had desires and worldly passions. As you know, John says, you can't love God in the world too. You know, otherwise the love of the God of the Father is not in you. So these people are hiding in the rocks. The haughty and the prideful can't forgive. They can't say, they can't, they won't deny the fact that they have idols. They'll, they'll think that they don't, uh, that they don't love money, that they don't worship the things that their hands have made, that there's, you know, something that's consuming their life more than God, whether that's success and power and fame or sports or whatever is taking precedence and front row seat in your life, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, rather than God. So what I'm trying to say is this, that... These The haughty and the prideful will not humble themselves, but God is going to force them to humble themselves on the day of the Lord. And he says that the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. He even talks about, uh, you know, in Ezekiel, how basically, or Zechariah 13, how the in that day, the prophets, when people go hiding in the rocks, in the clefts of the rocks and the caves, that that day, then the prophets will be removed. And God alone will be exalted, right? Ezekiel, uh, was it 32 or 33, was talking about where uh, the righteous or the wicked that hide in those rocks, they will be uh, taken out by a famine, uh, a pestilence that will consume them. So those that are hiding, um, you can't hide from God. And God will, you know, just like those, for example, that are making... Uh, Missile silos that are basically being made into a doomsday bunker and things like that. And even those that, that are going to hide in the rocks or hide from these things and try to hide from God, it's not going to save you. So it's either you humble yourself in the dust and ashes now or in brought low now and humbled by God or you're not. Um, it's either you love the things of this world and the things in it or you love God. You can't serve God in the world and God in money. It's just, it's God or the world. There's no other way of, about it. I want to think about this as well in Matthew 5, who are humble. Matthew 5 is very clear. Um, it's very simple. Matthew 5 is clear. Who is uh, the meek, the humble, the, you know, low lie, the poor in spirit. He's talking about those that uh, will be delivered, that those that will be saved. And it's very clear. It's very evident who is righteous and who is not, who has the fruits of the spirit and who does not. And, you know, the wicked love the things of the world. They're always chasing after gain. They're always chasing after success and power and fame. They're always seeking something in this life to exalt themselves, to glorify themselves, it, you know, for some gain and desire for themselves. And this is not a message that's not going to be preached today. Uh, it's not going to be in the churches. I'd be very surprised if, it's, you know, many anyone is speaking it. But it, we, the entire world will be brought low. The entire world will be humbled. And God alone will be exalted in the day of the Lord. And all haughty looks of man and all the, the uh, mincing walks of women as it goes on. Isaiah, it was a three here uh, and four where it's talking about the mincing prideful walk of women with their nose up in the air uh, that are rich, that have the hairdos, that have the, have the nice uh, jewelry and clothing, that de they would be stripped bald, they would be stripped naked, basically, so to speak. And these are the things that are coming. He's talking about the humbling of a whole entire society and world that will no longer be exalting themselves or glorifying themselves or what they have worked for or what they have earned or what they have achieved on this earth, but they will be humbled. And the wicked will know in a moment, in a single hour, as Revelation says, when judgment comes, that whether you're righteous or you're wicked or not, because you will hide from God in the day of his coming. Every knee will bow no matter what, the righteous and the wicked alike. 
But the difference between the righteous and the wicked is this. The righteous will stand before God and knee and then kneel right before them while the wicked will hide. He says that when the judgment comes, that the stars will start falling. Uh, the, the, the earthquake will, sh- the earth will shake so hard that the mountains will fall. That's even got to be kingdoms as it is mountains, right? It can be nations as it is kingdom or, or kings and leaders of nations as it can be actual mountains. And it says that the islands will flee into the sea. So God is saying that he's going to shake the earth. He says it once more, I'll shake it. And what can remain will remain. And that is, that is of the physical world will perish, right? So the spirit will remain and the physical things that are of the earth will be shaken. But are you of the spirit that can't be shaken? An unshakable kingdom. Or are you of one that can be shaken? You got to search your heart, soul, and mind and allow God to do it. You got to allow him to humble you. You got to allow him to search you. You got to allow him to search the crevices of your rock hard heart. If that's there, that to remove the stony heart so you can put a heart of flesh of humility and love and kindness and gentleness and endurance and hope and the and faith that endures all things. These are the things that you have to ask yourselves. God is returning for those that are patiently waiting. But he says, well, I find faith upon this earth when I return. And he's asking you, will he find faith? He gives us a secret key, those teaching and praying. And the thing that is lacking today is discipleship. We're not doing disciples. We're just making converts. Converts, the Pharisees were doing. And they made them twice the sons of the devil. And they didn't have a power, guys, to endure and continue to live holy. It's not enough to just repeat a prayer and say, I'm saved. It's We have to disciple people. They must be not only physically baptized, but spiritually baptized. Make sense? So that they know and can endure all things. And they can confidently say that I know my God. Do you know God? Can you confidently say that without pride in one's heart of your knowledge? That you can confidently say, God, that because you've been tested and trialed in the tribulations. That you have gone through the sufferings. That you have gone through uh, all tri- many trials and the tribulations and afflictions. And you come out on the other side and you say, I do know my God. That God has delivered me from all things. That God has rescued me. That God has pulled me out. And by faith alone, by it, through his grace, that he has caused me to live holy and upright and self-controlled lives. Saying no to sin and ungodliness and worldly passions until the coming of Messiah, as Titus 2 says. He is coming back to deliver those patiently waiting. Like Lot, that did not take pleasure desires in this life, that were grieved over the things that they seen in the world every single day. He said every single day, but God delivered them. And if God delivered the righteous, even a few, like with Noah, eight to be exact, he knows how to deliver the righteous. He knows where you're at. He knows where you're at in the world. Even if you're in a, in a mud hut, even if you're in a small house, a big house, whatever it might be, wherever you're at, he sees your heart. He sees your cries. He knows where you're at. And I'm telling you, he's hearing your cries. He hears the cries of the righteous, not the wicked. But you're going to be tested to make sure that you have a heart of the fruit of the spirits that you can continue to endure. That does testing will not steal. The love that you have, he says, don't fear those that can, that can kill the flesh, but can kill the soul and send the flesh and send both into hell. So you don't want to, you want to make sure that you are enduring, that you have the strength, that you're walking in the power of the spirit, because only by the power of the spirit can we overcome all things. Only by the power of the spirit can we endure all things. And God will rescue those that are afflicted, that are poor in spirit. In Matthew 5. That those that are poor and needy, that are humble, that are seeking him, that are crying out to him. He hears those of the cries of the righteous and he knows where you're at. And I'm telling you right now, make sure that you're those that will fall before God and not hide before God. That you'll fall on your knees and humble yourself before God now and at his coming. And not when he returns and you want to hide yourself. Guys, are you hiding right now? Are you hiding something? Are you hiding behind those fig leaves like the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve after they sinned because they had guilt and shame? Are you hiding? You got to make sure that you're naked and exposed before God now so you're not naked and exposed where he says in Revelation, everything will be exposed. Everything that's naked will be, the, the sky will be revealed. It will roll up like a scroll and everything naked in the earth will be revealed. It, 
it's exposed before him. Nothing done under the sun is ex- hidden. He sees everything, no matter what. So you want to make sure that you're right before God. We're all striving for his righteousness. So let's trust in his righteousness to make us righteous and trust in him by faith in his grace to make us endure, to endure and overcome all things in this flesh and worldly desires and passions. So we may walk in the love and the kindness and humility of God and endure all things and the things that are coming, all tribulations, all trials, all testings and everything that's coming so that we don't shrink back to the flesh and shrink back to the world and we endure all things. Shalom and God bless each one of you.